Hi, this is Bryce with Frostbite Cosplay. We've had a couple of people ask us how we go about planning our large-scale builds, and so in this video we're going to talk a little bit about that. So the first thing that we do whenever we're going to build something is we'll take multiple reference photos as well as pictures of, you know, human forms and such, and we'll start planning out how exactly we're going to put a person in this. One of the big things to remember and think about is uh, that you're going to have to wear this costume. You're going to have to be able to move around in this costume. And in order to do that, you need to figure out how you're going to fit in it, talk about how you're going to uh, strap into it and wear it, how the suit's going to stay in place and things like that. And so this is our first step is we'll take multiple reference photos, things like that, uh, take some of our artist mannequins and such, and we'll sit and plan out how a person's going to fit in this costume and how exactly it's going to go. Remember where all of your joints are because you do want to be able to move and to comfortably wear it. Sometimes you may have to make some concessions in your costume to make it more wearable. Um, you know, moving an arm back or a leg forward or whatever if you're doing a, a creature or something like that. So we'll plan out how a person is going to fit in this suit, how they're going to be able to move around, how they're going to be able to see, and we'll just discuss all of that kind of stuff um, amongst the three of us. So here we're uh, starting work on our Lizalfo build that we'll be doing over the next couple of months. And as we're planning it out, again, we're talking about what kind of mechanisms, how we're going to move the head, how we're going to move the eyes, um, all of that kind of stuff. And just making early plans. A lot of these are going to change as we go, but our first brainstorming session, this is basically how it goes. is just discussing where everything's going to go, how the person's going to fit, and how we're going to build and scale the costume. Now, for example, this Lizalfo is going to be uh, similar to Casplay's Hogger that she won BlizzCon with, um, in that the head is going to be puppeted by the person wearing the suit. And so we're planning out, you know, different mechanisms and such in that, how we're going to uh, support the head, how we're going to move the head, what kind of skinning and stuff we're going to do. And uh, again, we just kind of go through and discuss everything, how a person's going to see and. Uh, all of the uh, necessary things there. Once we get this all planned out and discussed, we start talking about different effects. You know, if we're going to try to make the eyes move using some servos and stuff, if we want to put lights in the horn. And this is just the big brainstorming session that you want to do. The most important part here, again, is just making sure that you're going to be able to wear this suit, that you're going to be able to move and uh, to be comfortable. Now, we'll take our, uh, our human form here. These are pretty inexpensive. They're great to have. They cost, you know, four or five dollars. This one is exactly 12 inches high, which makes scaling off of it really easy. But the first method that we're going to talk about is going to be using this to create a clay dummy or a uh, clay mock-up of how the costume is going to be and to build a basic pattern off of that. So we're going to take and we're going to build our Lizalfo out of this clay over the uh, little mannequin here. Now, you don't need to get all the fine details and stuff. This is just to get the basic silhouette. Um, as we build the bodysuit and uh, things like that onto it, we're going to be able to build up and add you know, muscle definition and fine details and things. So right now, we're just trying to create the basic form here in the clay. And so we'll sit and we'll you know, wrap and sculpt and just kind of do a, a basic build here. making changes as we need to to make it you know fit the profile a little bit better you know altering things here and there you want the basic profile shape to be as close as you can get it at this point And again, we're discussing how the leg's going to work, how the person in it's going to be standing, um, how we're going to, you know, move the arms. Um, we've decided that this particular build is going to require arm extensions because the Lizalfo's arms are as long as they are. Um, also going to be using a fake arm. And so when both arms are on the spear, they'll move together and help cover up the fact that one of the arms doesn't actually have an arm in it since you're going to have to have one to maneuver the head. Um, that's for this particular build. At this stage, whatever you're building, uh, just build, like I said, a basic form of it. 
So here we go. We're going to use a popsicle stick to figure out the uh, arm extension length. We want the arm to come down to about the knee. And so we'll continue to build clay around that as well. Making sure we keep track of where all of the joints are. Now, because the head and tail are going to be built independently, we're going to go ahead and take them off of the uh, clay here. I always like to build things in halves so that it makes it easier to be more symmetrical. So we're going to cut half of the clay off, make sure that we've got a nice, clean, open mannequin here. Now we're going to take and we're going to put tape all over the clay to make our basic patterns with to get our, our base form here. Now use small pieces, make sure that you're you know getting all of the uh, curves and details and stuff right because this is this is where really the base shape is going to come from and where you're going to get the uh, core of your suit. Now I didn't talk about it earlier, but we're also going to be using a method like Testa did with their Rancor. We'll be using TNT Cosplay's uh, EVA 38 foam for most of this build including all of the uh, long bones and stuff like that. But the joints, where we need the suit to be able to move, we'll be using some uh, inch-thick upholstery foam. And so as we're covering this, we have to keep track of where the joints are since we're going to have that separation of different types of foam that will allow us to be able to keep this thing moving. So now we're going to sit. We've got it covered in our foam. We're going to draw out where we need to make cuts and where things are going to separate. Making sure we put some hash marks so that we can line things up again on our pattern. We'll start just kind of cutting cutting those off. And again, this is where we're going to talk about the different kinds of foam because the shoulders, the elbows, the hips, the knees, things like that, instead of being the EVA foam that most of this build is going to be, are going to have to be that upholstery foam. And so we're going to want to keep track of that. So we'll go ahead and just take our form off of our clay. making sure that as you're cutting the pieces off you're labeling what they are so that things don't get confused and again you want to make sure that you've got those lines on there to make sure that you can line things back up when you're building the actual piece because this is going to be our actual template If you don't have clay, the same thing can be done by uh, forming, you know, wadding up some aluminum foil and forming it or things like that. Just anything to build in the miniature scale um, that you can get your basic shape out of is going to work to create these pattern, these type of patterns. Now, one thing to think about, too, is that when you're taping this, and I should have talked about it back there, but you want to make sure that your joints are sitting how you want them to rest neutrally. That's why the arm is bent, the leg is kind of squatted like that and such is because we want them to that to be kind of the, the natural resting form of this uh, this suit so we'll get those all done make sure we can cut out well all right and now we've got all of our pieces free and labeled now we're gonna go through and we're gonna add darts so that they lay flat and to do this you're just gonna make cuts in the pieces wherever there's curves until they can lay flat against the uh, piece of poster board um, once you've kind of learned how to do it, seeing where the tension points are to be able to line that up gets to be pretty easy. Get the pieces all labeled, make sure that they're uh, laying flat on here. And now the last step is going to be, uh, once we get those taped down, we'll go ahead and take a ruler and put a, a one inch mark on there. Now. This is pretty easy on mine because I'm exactly 6 feet and my uh, little artist thing is exactly 12 inches, so blowing it up gets easy. But you can take this to a FedEx or a Kinko's, and then you're just going to blow these patterns up to the size you need, and you're ready to go. Now, the next style of planning and building that I want to talk about a little bit on here is going to be doing it on a computer. Now, to do that, the first program I like to use is called Pepicura. It's a great program it's designed for paper folding, but it translates well to cosplay. And once you've learned how to do it, um, you can go in and make things out of, to uh, be built out of foam very well. So that you can take any model that you've, uh, any 3D model, and unfold it into flat pieces. This is great for, like, you know, ripping models out of video games and such. And I'll link a video in the description that kind of explains how to do that a little bit. But no matter how complex your piece is, you can use Pepicura to go through and break it down into simple foam patterns. And uh, 
they're all completely resizable to be able to build in whatever scale you want. So once you've got these unfolded and ready to go, ready to be built out of foam, there's a program called Armorsmith, and that's what I really want to talk about today. Now, I'll put a link in the description for both Pepecura and Armorsmith, but what Armorsmith does is it lets you create this digital mannequin of yourself. You can change the gender, change all the sizes, um, scale things up. It's got a ton of different adjustments to make sure that you build something that'll fit you. And what you can do is you just take your Pepecura models and you can import them and try them on this digital mannequin to see how the pieces are going to fit on you. It also has the ability to scale things if you need to change the, uh, the sizes to make sure that it fits how you want it to do. Um, you can also add stilts and such to your mannequin so that you know how tall things can be and test these templates. And then you can go and put those sizes into Pepecura, print your files out, and you're good to go. You're ready to go. When you get it built, it'll be the size that you need it to be. It works amazingly well for doing you know, computer-aided building and design. Um, I've used it rather extensively and been incredibly impressed by it. It's how I got my Reinhardt to fit and uh, to be able to move as well as I can because I can line up where my joints are and where everything needs to be just using this computer program. And so here's a couple of examples that I've done, you know, some designs and stuff in it. Now, the last thing that I want to talk about with building things that we do, it's not something we resort to very often, but it's a handy thing to learn how to do, and unfortunately it just takes a lot of trial and error, is to do things completely freehand. So you're going to take and do your basic design of what you think your shape needs to be and what you're after, and then you're going to take and just hold that up against yourself and uh, cut as necessary, make whatever changes you need to to get it to line up until you're happy with the shape that you have and how it's going to lay. Um, learning how foam folds and lays is going to be very important in being able to do this well. So you get your template done and then you can apply it to foam and build whatever it is that you're after. The same principle applies here if you're doing something curved. You can take poster board or cardboard or something like that, draw your piece out, just cut it out, and the same principle is going to apply that we talked about a minute ago is we're just going to add darts. Um, once you learn how your foam folds and get some experience, this gets a lot easier. But you're going to take and just cut these darts in there to create the forced curve that you want. You can take some tape, hold them together, and again you can use this to figure out where things are going to go, where things need to fold. And when you apply these darts to your foam, they'll, for, they'll force it to curve the same way they, they will your cardboard or poster board. Allowing you to be able to make just simple patterns that way. Once you get a shape that you're happy with and a curve that you're happy with, go ahead and cut the tape off so the darts open up again. And your piece is going to be ready to transfer to your foam to create your uh, finished part. I always recommend using templates and building templates. I'm, I'm never a fan of just cutting directly on foam just because it's a lot easier to take and trace these cardboard or poster board to do things that are the same on both sides than it is to take foam that's kind of soft and do and thick and do the same thing. Okay, the last thing that I want to talk about is garbage bag tests. As you're building these large scale costumes and props, taking simple materials like aluminum foil, cardboard, poster board, um, pool noodles, whatever it may be, and building the form out of things like that so that you can see what the silhouette's going to be, how it's going to move, how it's going to fill space, things like that, gets to be a great help. You can kind of catch problems in the early stages that way, and see what you might need to change, what you like, what you don't like, without spending a lot of money. Because like I said, you're just using whatever kind of you know garbage materials you might have around. It's also extremely easy because it can be done with just tape and cardboard. But again, it'll save you a lot of time in the long run and help get a much better final product. So it's something I definitely recommend that you do. So thanks for joining me, guys. We'll be posting more videos up um, over the next few months, finishing up the Super Mutant, building the Lizolfo, things like that. We hope you guys will join us for those. Thank you again, and we'll catch you on the next one.